I'm no trillionaire, but I have made millions in profit at the ripe age of 23. And to get here, I've had lots of ups and downs. And I'd go as far as to say, I've experienced more than most people my age and perhaps even a lot of people twice my age. Now, as I live and learn, I put a lot of time into reflecting and optimizing my mind and let's call it my general life strategy. So here are seven bite-sized pieces of advice from a 23-year-old rich dude that are probably gonna be valuable to you if you're trying to level up in life. Number one, do something that allows your brain to scale itself exponentially. What does that mean? Well, successful people have usually found something or created a system that allows them to take everything that they see, learn, and experience and synthesize it into something that can create value in their business. Now, that's obviously easier said than done, but for lack of better words, it simply starts with doing something that you're wholeheartedly passionate about. Stick with me, I know this sounds um, stereotypical. When you're passionate about what you do or you wholeheartedly believe in the mission that whatever you're doing is trying to accomplish, your brain constantly seeks and finds valuable input that can be turned into something valuable in the business. It's not rocket science, really. If you are not wholeheartedly passionate or believing in what you're doing, well, then all the small bits and bobs of advice and experience and even opportunities that come your way in your daily life, well, you're not going to be able to synthesize them or even recognize them and then turn them into something of value in the business. You're just going to let them pass and not do anything with them. Whereas on the other hand, if you're so passionate or if you wholeheartedly believe in the mission of what you're working on, well then again, your brain is constantly gonna be looking for things that could aid that mission. And so those things, they come our way for all of us every single day. But the difference is the successful people that believe in their mission, they can take all of those things and then convert them into something of value. And so that's an exponential curve that it results in. But if you don't have that, thing that you can take all of those things and, and convert them into, well, then you're just going to let them pass. And so your line remains stable or static instead of exponential. The first encounter and true personal experience I had this concept was when I was living in Paris with my girlfriend for one month at the end of last year. And it was sort of right at the time where I had really assembled the mission of my company Coed and I had really realized what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and the impact that I wanted to have for the rest of my life. And so as I went about my working days in Paris, um, I'd wake up every morning at the same time and then I'd go for a walk to get breakfast. And this was around a two, three kilometer walk that would take me 20, 30 minutes. Um, and I'd always listen to a podcast or an audiobook on the way to get breakfast for these 20, 30 minutes during my morning walk. And again, this was the first time that I experienced um, how much you can convert into value when you're aligned with your purpose. So it came to a point where any podcast I was listening to, it didn't matter if it was about business, or philosophy, or about something entirely else, politics, whatever it might have been, because I was now so aligned with my purpose and mission, with my business and what I was doing, everything I was hearing, I could synthesize and convert into something that made sense in my business or something that gave me an idea for a new implementation that I wanted to make in my business in the future. But if you're just working on something that doesn't even have to be destructive, but just shallow or something you're not wholeheartedly passionate about, something that you don't wanna pursue for the rest of your life, then you're not gonna be able to take those things and convert them into something of value. And so when you get to a point where everything you hear, see, learn and experience somehow relates to whatever you're working on, your brain becomes a thousand times more powerful. It allows your brain to scale exponentially. We all have 24 hours in our day. We're all exposed to a similar amount of information, obviously depending on the grade to which we seek that information, but we're all exposed to these things on a daily basis. The big question is, are you able to convert it or not? And those who are, scale exponentially. And those who don't, get nowhere. It's static. So this is an important lesson because life is not a static upwards or downwards curve. It's usually exponentially upwards or static or perhaps exponentially downwards. And so you want to make sure that you allow your brain, you enable your brain to scale itself exponentially. Number two, simple beats fancy when it comes to productivity and efficiency every single time. I used to think that working in a beautiful house with a beautiful view would level up my focus and motivation. And it turned out to be the exact opposite. I say this to use the metaphor, beautiful views are distracting. If you want to succeed, you must try to create a focus bubble environment, for the lack of better words. A place where all you do is work and where nobody and no thing can distract you. You need to create a simple, no BS routine that you know you can follow every single day without the risk of suddenly being 
distracted by an old friend or a parent or even a partner. You need to set clear rules for yourself and the people around you so that you can follow this no BS routine and create this bubble focus environment every single day. Creating something great and succeeding is almost impossible without having an environment that allows for absolute immersion. Number three, success has allowed me to rediscover my true personality. So recently, I'd say over the last 18 months or so, I've finally found pure confidence in my natural introversion. If you rewind two, three or four or five years back when I was starting my business and growing it, I was, I would probably appear a more extroverted person than I really am and a far more extroverted person than I appear to be today. If you meet me today, you'll meet a very introverted person, but that doesn't mean I'm shy. It doesn't mean I'm scared of speaking in public or scared of speaking to people. It just means that I enjoy being introverted and having peace and some level of isolation. I spend every single day with my girlfriend, but we rarely see friends. And by rarely, I mean, it's probably been four or five months since we saw friends and we never party. By never party, I mean, I don't even remember the last time we partied, maybe a year ago. No, scratch that. It was for New Year's Eve, which is almost nine months ago. The point is when I was on the come up before I succeeded, so to speak, I had this extroversion, which was an acquired skill, okay? Something I had learned and taught myself in order to, well, be more outgoing. But the more I succeeded, it eventually came to a point where again, 18 months ago, I realized I've always been an introvert and that's what feels natural to me. And this extroversion and outward going personality that I've been portraying or living for the last couple of years uh, was an acquired skill. But so there's this thing where if you're an introvert, um, and you're not successful or you don't have anything going for you, well, then it can seem like, well, that's not cool, right? But as soon as you've seen some level of success or at least some level of proof that whatever you're doing or working on actually works, well, then you can lean into that introversion because now you feel confident in yourself and how other people perceive you. Now, would I have been able to do this uh, introversion and antisocial lifestyle without living together with my girlfriend? I couldn't tell you, okay? I didn't reach this level of confidence in my introversion uh, before I met my girlfriend. It's something that's happened after I met her. Um, so I'm very, very grateful to be able to spend every day with her and live with her. Um, and the fact that she also doesn't have this need to go out and party with friends every day, but it's essentially just her and I against the world and we feel amazing together and we don't need anything except for what we have. And so that leads me to advice or lesson number four, and that is, Love is real and it's powerful. So from the age of 17, when I first started seeing a little bit of success with my online business, I went through a series of relationships um, in an almost unbroken chain for like four years or so. And all of these relationships failed. And at some point they made me feel like maybe finding the one and only or finding true love or finding somebody that I could spend the rest of my life with was an impossible utopian dream that you only see in movies or that only come to life in books. I had this feeling that maybe my whole life will be like this, just going through a series of relationships that will never really last forever and that will meet each other, have some joy, use each other and then leave each other again. I, I, I came to a point where I almost thought that was how the rest of my life was gonna look like until suddenly something else happened when I met the love of my life that I'm with now. Now I say suddenly, but perhaps it wasn't that sudden because it was not like we just met each other and from day one, everything was perfect and it was everything I had dreamed of. It was not like that. And I don't think that's how you know when you found true love because I don't think that exists. But the point where I knew that this was true love and that this was my forever, that this was my one and only, so to speak, was when I realized that no matter what challenge comes our way, we'll work our way through it. Our love is so strong that it doesn't matter if we're down low or if we feel challenged or um, if we're angry at each other, we'll work through it because it's her and I. When you experience that, that's when you know that true love exists. It's not that everything is perfect from day one, it's that you get this feeling that this is the one that I'm willing to work through anything with. And I can tell you that it's probably the greatest and most fulfilling experience uh, I've had so far in my life. Um, and I said that love is real and it's powerful because it's really powerful. Again, I don't know if I could be as focused as I currently am um, without having this powerful relationship dynamic where she helps me and I help her. It's truly a blessing. Number five, there is enough money out there. You just have to claim it. 
If you're broke, it's not because the world is unfair. It's simply because you haven't created anything that merits a disproportionately high reward. But feeling like the world might be unfair or that it's more difficult than ever or that it's almost impossible to attain substantial amounts of success and wealth, that feeling is quite natural to have before we've actually experienced it for ourselves because we don't know what it feels like and so we don't know that it's actually possible. And so I can tell you from having gone through the spectrum and having been on both sides of the spectrum, well, it's definitely possible and that there's more than enough money out there. You just have to claim it. Just remember and understand that if you're not great at what you do, and by great, I mean better than most other people in your field. And if you're not creating disproportionate amounts of value, well, then again, you won't be receiving disproportionately high amounts of reward. In other words, money. Business is business. The money you earn through real work is quite simply a measure of the value of your output. And that's great. I mean, I'm thankful that the system is working like that. What's the alternative? Socialism or going back to barter trading? No, of course there are disadvantages or unfair aspects to our economy, but it's at a point where opportunity is quite abundant. And again, there's more than enough money for you to get rich as well. You just gotta claim it. You just gotta be greater than everyone else or create more value than everyone else and you'll be rewarded more than everyone else. It's quite simple. Number six, and this one goes out to all the money crazed or money hungry young individuals out there. Number six is, don't envy the devil. Now, what do I mean by that? There's no shortage of people making an abundance of money in destructive ways. You could take the NFT or crypto rock pools from a couple of years ago that are still ongoing. You could take people managing girls on OF or people running scammy trading groups where they actually are profiting on their customers or students' losses. The point is there's, again, no shortage of destructive ways of making money and there's no shortage of petty human beings abusing those ways. But don't envy that. Don't envy any of the glam that comes with that lifestyle. Because trust me, money earned in destructive ways always comes with a really high interest in the long run. Never envy people that are living lavish or glamorous lives, but with no purpose. It's absolute hell. Remember, profound impact and purpose equals gratitude, joy, and growth. But destructive impact and purpose equals misery, greed, and self-sabotage, eventually self-destruction. When somebody says that money doesn't make you happy, it could be one, that the person has made their money in a bad way, and so that money has led them into depression and self-destruction, feeling bad about themselves. But it could also be from somebody who has made their money in a great way with an abundance of mission and profound joy and purpose. And so the reason that person would say that money doesn't make you happy is because, well, they realized that they are actually happy and that their happiness comes from pursuing their mission and not from the money. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say money doesn't make you happy at all. Again, if you're making your money in a great way, the money can make you happy because it enables you to just focus on your mission and what you're passionate about, as opposed to having to worry about life's trivial expenses, which would sort of not enable you to spend as much time on what you're passionate about. So again, the point is don't envy the devil. Don't be jealous or envious of people that you see living glamorous lifestyles if they're doing something shady to get the money that enables that lifestyle. Because trust me, inside they're feeling far worse than it looks. So just stay on your own path, focus on impact and value creation and the wealth will follow. And the wealth that will follow will be good wealth that will actually make you happy and enable you to have freedom of mind. Now, the seventh, final, and quite short bite-sized piece of advice is, yes, life is hard. You need to embrace opportunities and challenges alike. Life is basically like a never-ending video game that you have to play at the highest difficulty level possible. Well, then it is going to be fun, and then you're significantly increasing your chances of succeeding. It's not bad that it's hard, right? It's good that it's hard. That makes it fun, that makes it challenging, but embrace that challenge instead of letting that challenge put you down. It's a really simple mindset switch. We're all in different positions, right? And different levels of fortune in terms of where we're born or what our position is. You could say that's not fair. It probably isn't, but we got to work with what we have and make the best of it, even if it's tough. So just look at it like the hardest video game you could ever choose to play and choose to play it to the best of your ability. So here are my final words to my aspiring peers or viewers. Understand that the recipe for success is determination and the continuous will to learn and improve, okay? And 
never get stuck on one correct version of reality, okay? One objective fact about how life is or how it works, okay? Always be agile and be open uh, to learning new perspectives. Essentially, always be ready to grow and face opportunities and challenges. And to my already successful peers or viewers, just remember that decadence is a tremendously uninspiring pursuit and that everyone is on their own unique path to enlightenment and discovering their own purpose. We all cringe when we look back at the one, two, five, 10 or 20 year younger version of ourselves, because the younger version of ourselves is usually less developed, less knowledgeable, less experienced, less skillful. We're all at different stages of our development and we're all sort of doing our best. We're all at different stages of on our path to enlightenment, okay? Essentially that creating sincere and constructive value that enables humanity to progress in a good way, well, that's true fulfillment, okay? That's what we should all ideally be striving to do. So that was seven bite-sized pieces of advice. I hope you took some golden nuggets out of it and I'll see you in the next video.